Hello and welcome to our lecture on chemistry in medicine. In this module, we shall talk about the use of chemistry in the development of medicine from ancient times to the modern. Major contributions to healthcare have been made by chemistry. The development of new drugs, chemical analysis and the synthesis of new compounds. Many recent television programs advertise a large number of new drugs produced by chemist. The development of a new drug is long and complicated. The chemistry of disease must be studied as well as how the drug affects the human body. A drug may work well in animals but not in humans at times. Out of a hundred of drugs that look like they can treat a disease, only a small handful actually turn out to be both safe and effective. Medicinal chemistry and pharmaceutical chemistry are disciplines of pharmacy at the intersection of chemistry, especially synthetic organic chemistry and pharmacology and various other biological specialities, where they are involved with design, chemical synthesis and development for market of pharmaceutical agents or bioactive molecules. Chemistry helps in drug discovery and development. Chemists isolate medicinal agents found in plants and create new synthetic drug compounds. Chemists also use sophisticated analytical techniques to synthesize, synthesize and test new drug products and to develop the most cost-effective and environmentally friendly means of producing them. Chemistry contributes to the preparation and use of materials for surgery, such as sutures, artificial skin, sterile materials, etc. The sutures used in many surgeries today do not have to be removed because they simply dissolve in the body after a period of time. Replacement of blood vessels for hearts and other types of surgery are often made of chemicals that do not react with the tissue, so they will not be rejected by the body. Artificial skin can be used to replace human skin for burn patients. Clinical laboratory testing uses a wide variety of chemical techniques and instrumentation for analysis. Clinical laboratory testing allows us to answer commonly asked questions such as, is your cholesterol high? Do you have diabetes? Some of the laboratory tests use simple techniques, while some may involve complex equipments and computer analysis of the data in order to perform measurements on large number of patients' samples. Clinical chemists use chemistry to evaluate patient health by evaluating blood, studying the DNA, examining tissues and cells. This data helps physicians to make earlier, more precise diagnoses and tailor a therapy for the patient. Laboratory testing has come to the local drug store or grocery store because of developments in chemistry. You can test your blood glucose using simple portable devices that run a chemical test on the blood sample and tell you how much glucose is present, allowing a diabetic patient to regulate how much insulin should be administered. However, the presence of chemistry in medicine is nothing new. Using plants and plant substances to treat all kinds of diseases and medical conditions is believed to date back to prehistoric medicine. In fact, the earliest evidence of human use of plants for healing can date back to the Neanderthal period. The oldest written evidence of medicinal plants usage for the preparation of drugs has been found on a 5,000 year old Sumerian clay slab from Nagpur, which has 12 recipes for drug preparation and has references to 250 plants, including alkaloids such as poppy. The Chinese book on roots and grasses, titled Pen Sao, written by the Emperor Shen Ung of circa 2500 BC, discusses 365 drugs which may be of use even today. Homer's epics, the Iliad and the Odysseys of 800 BC mentioned 63 plant species from the Minoan and Egyptian Assarian pharmacotherapy. The Ebers papyrus 
written in Sirka in 1550 BC, represents a collection of 800 proscriptions referring to 700 plant species and drugs used for therapy such as pomegranate, castor oil, aloe, garlic, onion, coriander and many more. Cave paintings show that around 8000 years ago, honey was first being used by humans. Although there was no evidence of humans keeping and cultivating colonies of bees until 2400 BC. Honey was mainstay in the medical practices of many cultures for centuries. Over 4000 years ago, honey was used in traditional Ayurvedic medicine where it was thought to be an effective way of treating indigestion and imbalances in the body. Before its use by ancient Egyptians, honey was rubbed onto the skin to treat wounds and has been found in medicinal substances from over 5000 years ago. The beneficial properties of honey have been explored and studied in modern times and there is evidence to suggest that some parts of its historical reputation may hold truth. The presence of low amounts of hydrogen peroxide in honey is good because it won't affect us much, but at the same time, it may kill MRSA bacteria. MRSA stands for Methicillin Resistant Staphylococcus aureus. It is a bacterium that causes infections in different parts of the body. It's tougher to treat than most strains of Staphylococcus aureus, or in short, Staph, because it's resistant to some commonly used antibiotics. The symptoms of MRSA depend on where you are infected. Most often, it causes mild infections on the skin like sores or boils. But it can also cause more serious skin infections or infect surgical wounds, the bloodstream, the lungs or the urinary tract. Though most MRSA infections aren't serious, some can be life-threatening. Honey has high levels of monosaccharides like fructose and glucose and it contains about 70 to 80 percent sugar which provides the sweetness. The water content of honey is the quality aspect that determines the ability of honey to remain fresh and avoid spoilage by yeast fermentation. Raw honey can have water in honey content less than 14 percent and the lower the water content the higher is the perceived value of the honey. It is internationally recognized that good quality honey should be processed at less than 20% water content. Low water content is considered desirable because honey may begin to ferment and lose its fresh quality if the water content in honey is greater than 20%. Unpasteurized honey ferments because it contains wild yeast. However, due to honey's high sugar concentration, these yeast are less likely to cause fermentation in honey with low water content. The honey's low water content causes the yeast to enter its dormant stage, preventing the fermentation process. Deficin 1, a protein that has been used as a natural antibiotic, is one of its key secretions by the, royal, by the bees in the royal jelly, another important aspect or feature of honey. Methyl glyoxyl, a chemical compound, inhibits bacteria's ability to produce the proteins needed for it to survive and makes honey a powerful remedy to infection and illness. So these are some of the key properties that have made honey a very vital medicine over the years. The history of medicine shows how societies have changed in their approach to illness and disease from ancient times to the present. Early medicinal traditions included those of Babylon, China, Egypt and India. Although there is very little record to establish when plants were first used in medicinal purposes, the use of plants as a healing agent as well as clays and soil is ancient. Over time, through emulation of the behaviour of fauna and medicinal knowledge base developed and was passed on between generations. Even earlier, Nyantil man may have considered to have engaged in medicinal practices. The Atharva Veda, a sacred text of Hinduism 
dating from early Iron Age, is one of the first Indian texts dealing with med medicine. The Atharva Veda also contains prescriptions of herbs for various ailments. The use of herbs to treat ailments would later form a large part of Ayurveda. Ayurveda, meaning the complete knowledge for long life, is a medical system of India. Its two most famous texts belong to the schools of Charaka and Sushtra. The earliest foundations of Ayurveda were built on the synthesis of traditional herbal practices together with a massive addition of theoretical conceptualizations, new nosologies and new therapies dating from about 600 BCE onwards. And coming out of these communities of thinkers which included the Buddha and others. However, what distinguishes Ayurveda from other systems is that it has a well-defined conceptual framework that is consistent throughout the ages. The conceptual base is what perhaps is highly evolved and far ahead of its time. It was first among the medicinal systems to advocate an integrated approach towards matters of health and disease. Another important distinguishing feature of Ayurveda is that unlike other medicinal systems which developed their conceptual framework based on the results obtained with the use of drugs and therapy, it first provided physiological, philosophical framework that determined the therapeutic practice with good effects. Its philosophical base is partly derived from Samkhya and Nyaya Vaishika streams of the Indian philosophy. It's enabled it to evolve into a rational system of medicine quite early in its evolution and to get detached from religious influence. It laid great emphasis on the value of evidence of senses and human reasoning. Physicians employed all five senses for diagnosis, such as dust, touch, sight, taste, smell and sound. Hearing was often used to distinguish the nature of breathing, alteration in voice and grinding sound produced by the rubbing between the bow broken ends of bones. They appear to have had a good clinical sense and their discourses on the prognosis contain accurate references to symptoms that have great import. Magical beliefs still persisted, thus the prognosis could be affected. The Indian Materia Medica was extensive and consisted mainly of vegetable drugs, all of which were from indigenous plants. Charaka knew over 500 medicinal plants and Shustra knew over 760. But animal remedies, such as the use of animals, their bones, gallstone, Minerals like sulphur, arsenic, copper sulfates, gold, etc. were also employed over time period. The physicians collected and prepared their own vegetable drugs amongst those that eventually appeared in Western pharmacopoeias were cardamom and cinnamon. As a result of the strict religious beliefs, hygienic measures were important in treatment. Two meals a day were decreed with indications of the nature of diet, the amount of water to be drunk before and after a meal, and the use of various condiments. Bathing and skin care were carefully prescribed, as were cleansing of the teeth with twigs from named trees, anointing of the body with oils, and the use of eye washes. Some of these have still been persistent in today's modern medicine. Operations were performed including excisions of tumours, incisions, draining of abscesses, punctures to release fluid in the abdomen, extraction of foreign bodies, repair of anal fistulas, splinting of fractures, amputations and stitching of wounds and many more. But however, these had to be used with some instrument, so a broad array of surgical instruments were used. According to Shushrata, the surgeon should be equipped with 20 sharp and 101 blunt instruments for various descriptions. The instruments were largely of steel. Alcohol seems to have been used as a narcotic during operations and bleeding was stopped 
by hot oils and tar. Now, unwritten history is not easy to interpret. And although much may be learned from the study of drawings, bony remains, and surgical tools used by early humans, it is difficult to reconstruct their mental attitude towards the problem of disease and death. It seems probable that as soon as they reached the stage of reasoning, they discovered, by the process of trial and error, which plants might be used as food, which of them were poisonous, and which of them had some medicinal value. Folk medicine or domestic medicine, consisting largely in the use of vegetable products or herbs, originated in this fashion and still persist. But that is not the whole story. Humans did not at first regard death and disease as a natural phenomena. Common diseases such as colds and constipation were accepted as a part of an existence and dealt with by means of herbal remedies which were available at the time. Serious and disabling diseases, however, were placed in a very difficult and a different category. These were a supernatural origin. They might be the result of a spell cast upon a victim by an enemy or a demon or a work of an offended god who had either projected some object, a dart, a stone, a worm into the body of the victim and had abstracted something, unusually from the soul of the patient. The treatment then applied was to lure the errant soul back to its proper habitat within the body or to extract the evil intruder, be it a dart or a demon, by counter spells, incantations, potions, suctions and other means. Ancient Egyptians had thought that gods heal them. They also treated illnesses with herbal medicines, but some of them performed some magical rituals. And the historians believe that Egyptians had learned how diseases affected people because they used to perform the mummification. During the process of mummification, the body was wrapped in cloth and certain body organs like the brain was removed and kept in preserved clay jars. Because of this, the Egyptians were regarded as some of the first learners of medicine because they were trying to understand the human body anatomy. A towering figure in the history of medicine was the physician Hippocrates of Kos, considered as the father of modern medicine. The Hippocratic Corpus is a collection of around 70 early medical works from ancient Greek, strongly associated with Hippocrates and his students. He not only instructed people of their good need for exercise and regulated diet, but also classified illness as acute, chronic, endemic and epidemic. Another of Hippocrates' major contributions may be found in his descriptions of the symptomatology, physical findings and surgical treatment. His teachings remain relevant to present day students of pulmonary medicine and surgery. The Romans invented numerous surgical instruments like the surgical use of forceps, scapels, cross blade scissors, the surgical needle. Romans also performed cataract surgery. They built systems to provide clean water not only to drink but for public baths, which was imitated and which is an imitated idea rather from the Harappan civilization. The Roman army physician Discrodes was a Greek botanist and pharmacologist. He wrote in the encyclopedia De Martia Medica, describing over 600 herbal cures, forming an influential pharmacopoeia which was used extensively for the following 1500 years. Medieval medicine in Western Europe was composed of a mixture of existing ideas from antiquity. In the early Middle Ages, with the fall of the Western Holy Roman Empire, standard medical knowledge was chiefly based upon the surviving Greek and Roman text preserved in monasteries and elsewhere. Medicine in the Middle Ages was rooted in Christianity, not only 
with the spread of medical text to monastic traditions, but also to the beliefs of sicknesses in conjugation with medical treatment and theory. Christianity throughout the medieval period did not set medical knowledge backwards or forwards. The church taught that God sometimes sent illness as a punishment and that in these cases, repentance would lead to recovery. This led to the practice of penance and pilgrimage as a means of curing illnesses. The Black Death, also known as pestilence and the Great Mortality or simply the plague, was the deadliest pandemic recorded in human history. It has resulted in a death of up to 25 to 200 million people. It affected nearly 60% of the population in Europe and East Asia. Islamic medicine preserved, systematized and developed the medical knowledge of classical antiquity, including the major traditions of Hippocrates, Galen, Discrodes during the post-classical era. Islamic medicine was the most advanced in the world, integrating concepts of ancient Greek, Roman, Mesopotamian, Persian, and as well as ancient Indian tradition of Ayurveda. While making numerous advances and innovations, Islamic medicine, along with the knowledge of classical medicine, was later adopted in the medieval medicine of Western Europe, after European physicians became familiar with Islamic medical authors and authorities during the Renaissance of the 12th century. The Renaissance brought an intense focus on scholarship to Christian Europe. A major effort to translate Arabic and Greek scientific works to Latin emerged. Europeans gradually became experts not only in the ancient writings of the Romans and Greeks but in the contemporary writings of Islamic scientists. During later centuries of the Renaissance came an increase in the experimental investigation, particularly in the field of dissection and body examination, thus advancing our knowledge of human anatomy. In 1628, the English physician William Harvey made a groundbreaking discovery when he correctly described the circulation of blood in his Exercitatio Anatomica de Mortio Cordis and Sanguinis in Animalibus, which in Latin translates an anatomical exercise on the motion of the heart and blood in living beings. Before this time, the most useful manual in medicine used by both students and expert physicians was the one of Discrodis de Martia Medica, an original pharmacopoeia. Bacteria and protist were first discovered with a microscope by Anton van Leeuwenhoek in 1676, initiating the scientific field of microbiology. The barber surgeon was one of the most common European medical practitioners of the Middle Ages, was generally charged with caring of soldiers during battle and after battle. In this era, surgery was seldom conducted by physicians, but instead by barbers who possessing razors and coordination indispensable to their trade were called upon for numerous tasks, ranging from cutting hair to amputing limbs. In this period, surgical mortality was very high due to blood loss and infection. The cross-cultural exchange between the people of India and their colonial rulers provides a fascinating insight into how these encounters shaped medicine and medical education all over the world during the 18th and 19th century era. The practice of medicine changed in the face of rapid advances in science, as well as new approaches by physicians. Hospital doctors began to be much more systematic with their analysis of patients' symptoms in diagnosis. Among the more powerful new techniques were anesthesia and the development of both antiseptic and aseptic operating theatres. Even in the 18th century, search for a simple way of healing of the sick 
continued. Medical research and training improved in the 18th century, but still there was no cure for the disease called smallpox, a disease that killed millions of people over thousands of years. Middle Eastern doctors gave people mild doses of smallpox to combat the disease. Some patients became immune, but many died and the spread of disease continued. The smallpox vaccine was the first vaccine to be developed against a contagious disease. In 1796, the British doctor, Edward Jenner, demonstrated an infection with a relatively mild cowpox virus conferred immunity against the deadly smallpox virus. Cowpox served as a natural vaccine until the modern smallpox vaccine emerged in the 19th century. Louis Pasteur, well known for inventing the process that bears his name, pasteurization. Pasteurization kills microbes and prevents the spoilage in beer, milk and other goods. Hospital doctors began to be much more systematic with the analysis of patient symptoms and diagnosis. Among the more powerful new techniques were anesthesia and the development of both antiseptic and aseptic operating theatres. This was a major breakthrough during this era, but many still died from infected surgical wounds. In 1849, British-born Dr. Blackwell graduated from Geneva Medical College in New York, becoming the first woman in the US to receive a medical degree. Until her death in 1910, Dr. Blackwell was a strong advocate for women in medicine. Spending, spending much of her time campaigning for women's rights and establishing institutions dedicated to training female medical students in both the US and the UK. Because Blackwell altered her role as a woman in pursuing a career as a physician, some viewed her as abnormal and unnecessarily rebellious, while others admired her strength and courage and saw what her accomplishments could lead in the future. Mary Seacol, Jamaican uh, nurse, she learned about herbal medicine from her mother and gained recognition as a skilled healer to the soldiers in Kingston. It was not cause of her gender, but cause of her skin color. She was not given the job in any, any hospital or healthcare center in the US. Thus, she went on to establish a hotel and nurture the wounded soldiers of war. She is known as Mother C. Cole. At the same time, a sound scientific thinking of making steady progress in advances in physics, chemistry and biological sciences for, were converging from rational scientific bases of every branch of clinical medicine. New knowledge disseminated through Europe and traveled across the sea, where centers of medical excellence were established in America. Medicine was revolutionized in the 19th century and beyond by the advances in chemistry, laboratory techniques and equipment. Old ideas of infectious diseases, epidemiology, were gradually replaced by advances in bacteriology and virology. The 20th century produces a plethora of discoveries and advances that in some ways the face of medicine changed out of all recognition. In 1895, the discovery of X-rays, as we all know it, has been a major breakthrough in science, had allowed doctors to see into the body without cutting it open for the first time. In less than a century, an entire medical speciality developed based on the discovery of radiology. New imaging technologies such as ultrasound and CAT and MRI scans help doctors identify diseases and provide better treatment options. A major discovery again in the 19th century or the 1900s was the use of penicillin against the bacteria penicillin chrysogenum. It is still widely used today and in the development of more antibiotic drugs 
that fight infections and save many lives. Transplanting organs such as the heart, kidneys, livers, eyes and many other more from donors to recipients is a major breakthrough again in medical history. Donors are people who have died but express their willingness to give their organ to those of them in the event of their death. In the first half of the 20th century, emphasis continued to be placed on combating infection and notable landmarks were also attained in endocrinology, nutrition and other areas. In the years following the, both the world wars, but particularly World War II, insights derived from cell biology altered basic concepts of the disease process. New discoveries in biochemistry and physiology opened the way for many more precise diagnostic tests and more effective therapies. And spectacular advances in biomedical engineering enabled the physician and the surgeon to probe into the structures and the functions of the body by non-invasive image imaging techniques such as ultrasound, CAT and NMR. With new scientific development and medical practices of just a few years earlier became obsolete. The rapid progress of medicine in this area was reinforced by enormous improvements in communication between scientists throughout the world. Though publications, conferences, now computers and the electronic media, media they can freely exchange ideas and report on their discoveries and future endeavors. No longer was it common for an individual to work in isolation. 